Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, there lived a king and queen who ruled a magnificent land. They had everything they could dream of, but no children. The queen wanted desperately to be a mother. Day and night she would say, I am a field on which nothing grows. The sorceress, who lived in the palace and only practiced magic that was good, insisted that she could help the queen. But the queen would hear none of it. No magic, the queen would say. The sorceress, Inalda, pressed the queen perhaps a bit too hard one day. One potion, your majesty, that is all it will take. The queen could not hear any more of it. And so she had Inalda removed from the palace. You to go into the woods, the guard told her. Inalda could not believe it. She and the queen were great friends, or so she thought. The sorceress grew angry and bitter. She set out into the woods, vowing never to return. Finally, a child did come, a boy. The king proclaimed, The prince has been born, my son and heir. And when I am gone, he shall sit upon my throne and rule. But what the king and queen did not know was a spell had been put on their son. Inalda no longer practiced good magic, but now she made potions and spells that fit her every mood. She placed a spell on the boy. No human would he be. Only when he found true love's kiss would the spell be broken. True love does not exist, and so my spell is unbreakable. <laughs> Inalda cried. As the child grew, he began to grow fur, and large ears, and a long snout. He was growing into a donkey. The king and queen did not care. They loved him just the same. But they knew some evil must be afoot. They searched for Inalda, thinking she might be of help. But when they found her, she cackled and said, A donkey he shall be forever! <laughs> she would not tell them how they could break the spell. Inalda was banished from the land for the rest of time, and the knights were sent to find a way to break the spell. But no one could, not even a great wizard. So the king and queen brought their son up just as any other prince would be. The donkey prince was called Robert, and he grew big and strong. All the mirrors had been taken from the palace, for the prince, although he knew he was a donkey, had never seen his own likeness, and so he was never bothered by his differences, for it mattered naught to him. He was a friendly and happy young lad, and beyond all else, he loved music. When a famous musician was brought to the palace to play the lute for him, he said, Please, I beg you, teach me how to play like you. Oh, your majesty, your fingers are not suited to play in, as you have hooves. I do not think the strings would hold, but let me play for you. No, I shall learn. To the surprise of the lute player, Robert did learn, and he played very well indeed. Life for Robert went on just as it had always been. Wonderful. Until one day, he went into the forest with a trusted friend and came upon a lake. Let us have a drink and sit a while, he said. But when Robert looked down into the water 
and saw his own likeness. He was quite distressed. I... I am a donkey, he cried. You are, my lord, but you always have been. What's different now? asked his friend. I do not suppose anything, but I've just never seen myself before. I do not wish to return home, not yet. I wish to travel, to make my way as I am. So Robert went off and saw kingdom after kingdom, his friend by his side. One cold, rainy night, they came upon a castle. The guards would not let them in, so they sat by the gate and Robert played the lute. So wonderfully and wondrously did he play as a donkey that the guards told the king, and he ordered, Let them in, he shall play for me. And play he did. For the king and his daughter, a lovely princess. Robert was invited to the feast, and he attended. Much of the court was shocked. A donkey eating with the king? But sit by him he did. You are noble, you say? The king asked. Robert did not want to have anyone know too much about him. He just wanted to be Robert. So he replied, I am noble, sire, although I may not look the part. And what is it you are looking for? Gold? Jewels? Fine clothes? No. My kingdom? said the king. No. A wife, perhaps? Robert realized that, yes, perhaps that was what he was looking for. Someone to love and to be loved. Yes, he replied. Perhaps you might consider my daughter, for she will marry no one. So I have decided a husband must be picked by me. You seem quite a good fellow. It shall be my honor, said Robert. And so a wedding was held. The princess thought Robert charming. They walked and talked and laughed. They felt a deep love for one another. One night, when it was time for bed, the princess kissed Robert. And when they awoke the next morning, the princess was stunned. Robert? she asked. Yes, my dear. She threw her arms around him. The spell had been broken. True love's kiss. Robert had returned to his human form. And what a handsome prince he was. And how he loved his wife. They went to his kingdom and his mother and father rejoiced. Their son had come home with the loveliest wife they could have imagined and the spell had been broken. A great feast was made. They celebrated for three days and they lived happily ever after. The end. It's time to take a deep breath, close our eyes, so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children.